What's up geeks and welcome to the channel. Regex, regex, or maybe regex, believe it or not some people do use that, is one of the most controversial topics in coding, not only in terms of its pronunciation, but also in terms of its performance. So in today's video, we will attempt to settle these controversies, all while explaining the basics of regular expressions. Okay, let's start with the pronunciation. If you google this term, you will see that regex is the American pronunciation of the word, whereas regex is the British pronunciation. So both are technically correct, but why the controversy? You see, people that use the word regex capture this word as two separate entities, regular and expression. However, people that use the word regex capture it as one single entity and read it as if it was a regular English word. And in English, when the letter G is followed by an E or an I, then it should be softened, same as you would do with angel or change or general, for example. Personally, I pronounce it with a hard G, so regex. Why? Well, because it literally means regular expression, and my mind captures it as two separate entities, just like FedEx. But I would never correct someone who is using a soft G while pronouncing it, because they are also technically correct. Now, while exploring regexes, you will encounter many individuals who tend to think that every problem is solvable using regular expressions. On the other hand, there are also many people who try to avoid them at all costs, even if using regular expressions would lead to a more compact solution. So why is that? Is this a widespread misunderstanding, or are regular expressions actually slow? Well, it depends. It depends on the problem you are trying to solve, on the engines you are making use of, and on the pattern or regex you wrote. Sometimes, the same problem can be solved with the help of different patterns, but some are more optimized than others, and some are easier to read. You see, regexes can become very tricky, hard to read and write often, and this could be one of the cases where the developer finds themselves in a position where they're better off using an easy-to-read, maintainable section of code instead. Another thing you may notice is that the people who use regexes the most usually come from a Linux developing background, and that's because regexes were made for such engines. The same regex or pattern that takes 20 minutes to be processed with Python or Java, if it wasn't tuned carefully, will be completed in a couple of seconds if done using grep. Okay, I can talk about this all day, so for the sake of this video, I'm going to stop here and start with the basic concepts of regular expressions. So, a regular expression, or regex, also referred to as pattern, is a single string used to represent another string or a set or list of particular strings. Take as an example the string you see in front of you. Like, life, and in between them a pipe. The pipe here, which I presume you are already familiar with, is used to represent the OR condition. So, the single string references the set of two words, like and life. The same set of words can be obtained by using parentheses, so if you wrap the K and F with the set of parentheses, the resulting pattern will represent the same set of words. Parentheses are also used to group the different rules we are including inside our pattern. We'll get to groups at a later stage, don't worry about them. For now, take the following pattern as an example. A question mark B. This one matches both the strings A, B and B as the question mark indicates zero or one occurrences of the preceding element. On the other hand, the asterisk indicates zero or more occurrences of the preceding element. So, for example, A asterisk B matches B, AB, AAB, and so on. And the plus sign indicates one or more occurrences of the preceding elements, so A plus B matches AB, AAB, and so on, but not B. Then we have the curly brackets. The number you define inside the curly brackets is the exact number of occurrences the preceding item should match to. So a1 inside curly brackets after the a means that only the string ab is matched using this pattern. You can also use the brackets to specify boundaries, like a minimum and a maximum. So if inside these same brackets you place 0, 2, then b, ab, and aab will be matched. Now, if you place a dot in your pattern between the A and the B, then any string that starts with A, ends with B, and is composed of three letters only, fits this pattern as the dot matches any character. It's a wildcard. When you follow the dot by an asterisk, which I'm sure you encountered a lot, it will match one or more occurrences of the preceding character. So, the regex you see matches any string that contains an A and then a B at some later point. 
However, the difference between the asterisk used alone and the dot asterisk is that the one with the dot can be used alone. There is no need to precede it with a character unless that's what you want, as the dot is the wild card. So, the literal AAAB will be matched using A asterisk B, or A dot asterisk B, or simply dot asterisk B. Okay, we had a look at parentheses and curly braces, now it's time to see square brackets. If you place inside the square brackets A, B, C, then this pattern will match any of the three characters A, B, or C only. However, if you precede them with a caret, it means that it will match any other character except for A, B, and C. Now, when you use a dash inside the square brackets, it means you are defining a range. So A dash Z means any single character in the range of letters from A to Z. The caret can also be used here to represent all characters except the ones present in the range defined. In our case, any character except the lowercase letters ranging from A to Z. I mentioned lowercase because if you wanted to represent the uppercase letter, you have to mention this explicitly by telling the pattern. This is done using a dash between an uppercase letter A and an uppercase letter Z. The next thing you can make use of to write patterns is the backslash. A backslash followed by a lowercase s represents a white space or a space. However, when followed by an uppercase s, it means any other non-white space character. If followed by a lowercase d, it means any digit. However, if followed by an uppercase d, it means any non-digit character. And finally, if you follow the backslash by a lowercase w, it means any word character. A word can be a letter or a digit, but not special characters or white spaces. But if followed by an uppercase w, you guessed it, it means any non-word character. Now, when the caret is not used inside square brackets, it marks the start of a string. It means that the pattern that follows it must be detected at the beginning of a string. It cannot be at the middle. And when the dollar sign is used, it marks the end of a string. So, let's suppose we have this regex and the string below it. You may think that, yeah, I certainly have a match as my string is literally composed of the letters A, B, and C. But because we used the caret and the dollar sign, that is not the case. To have a match, the whole string must be made of only one letter, and that is not the case here. If we remove the dollar sign only, then the first letter, which is A, will match our pattern and only the first one, because we kept the caret and we have to match starting the beginning of the string. And if we remove both the caret and the dollar sign, we will have three matches inside the same string of our pattern, the A, the B, and C. Okay, I previously hinted at groups, and now that you have a basic understanding of regexes, let's expand on them. You see the patterns you create can be grouped, and these groups can later be retrieved as variables in your application and used separately, no matter what programming language you are using. Let's take this pattern and this string as an example. This pattern will work exactly like the second one, but the difference between the two is that the results of the first one are grouped. So, using both of these patterns, the given string you see in front of you will be matched. However, if you use the first pattern in your implementation, you will be able to do backslash 1 in the same regex or pattern.group1 in Java to retrieve the first substring that matched in the given pattern, or backslash 2 to retrieve the second one, and so on. And these groups can be used by the same pattern or any other part of your application. Okay, I am not going to dive further in regexes to avoid packing too much information in a single video and making it too complex but I assure you a lot remains. So let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see a part 2 video for this one. Additionally, and to make sure that you got everything we went through, I've put together the 8 patterns and strings you can see. Now what I need you to do is put everything you've learned in this video to the test and check whether these patterns match their corresponding strings or don't. So if you want to go through this exercise, pause the video now. If not, the answers will appear in 5. And here you go, all of the patterns you see match their corresponding strings, except for the very last one. So, that's it for this video, I hope it was helpful, thank you guys for watching, take care, and I will see you in the next one.